so this is a little bit of an experiment, a little bit scary, I think, for me, <laughs> um, because I kind of wanted to do all this live instead of showing stuff that's pre-built. Um, and I don't know how long it's going to take. I think we should be able to get through uh, building a GPT and an API that talks to it in about 20 minutes. Um, uh, so we'll see if we go a little bit faster and a little bit slower. I'd actually maybe like to do it twice, uh, once to go through kind of real fast and kind of not see too much, but then the next time go a little bit slower and ask questions and maybe not get through the whole thing. Another, um, and, and, uh, we could also, if we have time left over, uh, usually this call goes about 90 minutes. Um, uh, if we have time left over, uh, we could talk about other LLM stuff and chatbot stuff uh, like that. So does that sound like a good plan? I can't see all of you. So unless you yell out something or raise your hand or something, I, I won't, Sounds I won't good. hear any objections. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. Um, okay, so let's go to the boring learning part first. Um, I won't take very long at this. We're going to talk about a couple different things. Um, I guess another good thing to talk about is what a GPT is. Uh, I'm going to assume that everybody, since we're all AI salon folks, I think everybody knows what a GPT is. So I'm going to skip over that. Um, what we're talking about doing is uh, using something that um, I'll start I'll, I'll, I'll look at a GPT and what makes a GPT. So if I click explore and say create a GPT, um, this is the screen you've probably all played with. Uh, there's two parts of this over here. The, the building part has got create and configure. You can actually click between these whenever you want. Um, uh, so Handy, at first did I get your name close enough? <laughs> And you got second, it perfectly. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. I'm as noob as it gets. So you want me to I would slow appreciate down a little bit or... extra. No, I'll go for it. I mean, I'm going to watch the recording a bunch of times. But um, if you want to go explain a little bit more, feel free. Okay. I appreciate do you, it. Do you know what a GPT is, at least? A little bit. But go so, ahead with detailing. Explain <laughs> if you can. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So real quick, um, I can go to chat GPT. And I'm, I've got the Plus account. To play with the GPTs, you still need a plus account. Um, when I'm when I'm just chatting with ChatGPT, uh, uh, you can just chat with it, right? And you can ask questions back and forth. Uh, you can tell it, you know, hey, make me an outline of of a paper I need to write. Or um, the the thing about chatbots uh, right now, the, the way the chatbots works is they're really good at, at chatting. <laughs> um, and they know a lot of stuff, but they don't know what they know and they don't know what they don't know. So the, the thing to remember about ChatGPT is not to use it like an Oracle, like, you know, oh, ChatGPT, you know, what is the answer to the universe and life and everything? Or actually, this is a great example of something. Uh, I'm going to guess this is correct, but I wouldn't put this in my term paper without checking it. I would check that it's just, he's the 16th president, and I would check these you know, birth dates and death dates. Um, uh, something like, uh, uh, give me a standard outline for a term paper. Uh, thanks for fact-checking, Vicky. Um, so asking things like this, you know, if this is off a little bit, or I kind of know what a term paper is supposed to look like, or if I need to compare this with what the teacher gave me, you know, as, as her or his, uh, you know, standard format, you know, that's okay. But this kind of stuff, you know, or, um, hey, ChatGPT, um, uh, help me be more efficient. Um, I'm, I'm stuck with, uh, too many things to do. How can I, how can I get that figured out? Something like that. So this is a chatbot. So um, many people, including OpenAI, have come up with the idea of kind of making a, a custom chatbot that knows particular things better than, than the usual chatbots, maybe. Um, they know particular things. They have a particular style. Um, so uh, 
I don't know if I'm gonna. I, I'm not gonna really, gonna really show off uh, other people's uh, GPTs because just just go look. <laughs> um, uh, well, actually, let's click on Book Buddy. This looks great. Uh, oh, sorry. This is actually one of my demo ones. So it sounded really cool, but uh, we're gonna build something like this. Um, let's not get too far into it. I, the way I think about it, um, uh, a GPT is kind of like a computer for your chat GPT. So it, it's, or maybe it's like a, an app or something like that. <clears throat> it, it knows how to do certain things better than a standard GPT and it does them in a certain way. Um, so that's, uh, uh, that's what a GPT is. This is what the creation screens look like. Um, uh, and this is super helpful. Uh, this is a chat interface to essentially programming your own bot. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm, I'm here just to look at a particular thing. Uh, when I'm building a, a GPT, this one's blank. Um, when I'm building it, it's got a few things down here to, to think about. One of them is its knowledge. So um, if I had a whole bunch of papers on astronomy, um, or if uh, I ran a company and uh, I, I had an employee handbook or something like that, I can upload PDFs or doc files or Excel files or whatever. I can upload stuff here. And then as, I'm, as a user is chatting with my GPT, um, it'll look at these files as you know things that it knows extra about. So especially if this is stuff that's not on the web already, this is super valuable. Um, we're going to skip this part today. We're not going to use it at all. Uh, you can also tell your GPT to have the standard kinds of things that regular chat GPT can do. Yeah. Um, you know, can, you can say, I want it to be able to browse the web or not. Um, I want it to be able to, to Im generate images or not. I want it to be able to do data analysis or not. Um, there's a funny reason why this is turned off. Uh, when they released ChatGPT, this was turned on and they, they realized that, um, it doesn't say it here, uh, they realized that people could use this functionality to have the, your GPT, the GPT that you've made that kind of seems private, you know, private information. Um, you can use the data analysis thing to download all the files that somebody has uploaded. <laughs> so their cheap, cheap and dirty way to fix that is to make it so this isn't default. Um, so anyway, this we're also going to kind of ignore this part too. When we get to it, we're going to turn this off. So now the cool thing, probably fewer people have played around the, with this. This is what we're going to play with today, actions. So an action is where your GPT can say, huh, um, I need to look up like what the weather is for today, or I need to look up a, an employee record in the employee database or something like that. I wouldn't use an employee database yet because of privacy stuff, but something like that, you know. Um, so a way to do that is to like for me, uh, I live in San Diego and we go to the tide pools this time of year. So I can go to National Oceanographic uh, so, uh, folks, look at their tide table, you know, and this is the tide for today. Awesome. Um, uh, I, I actually want to go to tide pools when it's really low. So uh, plus one is still too high. I want uh, in a, I know in a week or so the tide is going to go way down here. And so it'll be really cool to go out and see critters in the ocean. So to do that, I go to a thing like this and, you know, I, I pick the days. Uh, uh, let's see, I want to make a tide table that goes until the 31st. Um, I only care about low tides. Um, I like a 24 hour clock. Um, I don't really care about the plot too much, but I really care about the data, so I can click this data. Um, and I get back a whole set of things, right? I know I kind of went through that very fast. <clears throat> you don't have to understand or even remember this very well. But if you think about it, what I did is I went someplace. I went, on, went, some, went someplace on the web. I told it some information, and then I clicked, tell me that, and it gave me some information back. So um, conceptually, that's pretty much what this action does. Um, it's a way for the chatbot to be chatting 
Um, and for the person to ask a question, then the chatbot says, huh, I know how to do that. I know how to look up the tides, for instance, in this case. Um, let me go out and do that. I'll, I'll do the same thing conceptually, actually. I'll, I'll, tell the, um, I'll tell Noah or whoever, you know, these are the dates I'm interested in, I'm, and this is the formats I'm interested in, low tides, 24-hour uh, time. So to do this, what you do is uh, you say, create a new action. And then it has a bunch of stuff that um, for most people is like, okay, great. Um, huh? What do I do? So now we're getting to the good part. This is what we're going to do today. Um, so let me go back. Let me get, not get too far away from our list. Um, I'm going to skip over the glossary for a sec. I'm going to talk about comparing things real quick. So let me go to step back and take it back into real life rather than APIs and data and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I like this. I, th I hope this metaphor is helpful. Um, when people say they have an API, it's kind of like they're, they're saying, I have a restaurant. So Noah, with their Tide thing, they have a restaurant that serves up hot and fresh data about Tides, if that makes sense. So um, an API URL, um, web addresses are called URLs. And kind of like this has a web address. Not that I can see it very well because it's small here. But um, this is a big address. It's a lot like the address for a, a restaurant. You know, If I want to go to my local taqueria, um, you know, it's on uh, Alta Vista Lane at a certain number and stuff like that. So that's kind of what an API URL is. An API key, you've probably heard about API keys because you need it for some of the open AI stuff. An API key is kind of like a membership card if you're at a private restaurant, you know, anybody can go to McDonald's, but I know a special restaurant where they serve extra fancy tacos and you have to have a membership card to get in. So. An API key is kind of like the membership card that gives, gets you in. It's just a number. Um, sometimes those letters and numbers, but and it's pretty long. Um, another way to think about an API key is it's a password. They're very, very similar to a password when you log into a web, a web thing. So I didn't need to log into NOAA, but if this was my employee database, I would have needed to log into it with a password. An API key is a password. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk through these again. These things, don't worry too much about learning them or not. Um, but we're going to actually work with a, something called an API schema. Um, it's a lot like the menu at a restaurant. So if I go to, to, my, if I go to a, uh, a McDonald's, there's burgers and French fries and chicken sandwiches and chicken nuggets and all that kind of stuff. And uh, this is a menu that you know, I, can, I can kind of see what I want. And then there's a thing called an API endpoint uh, is the technical term. It's a lot like saying, well, I want a burger. Um, and then the server or the screen will ask me, well, you know, do you want, uh, what kind of condiments do you want on that? What kind of meat do you want on it? Do you, you know, want to swap out? Do you want lettuce and, and tomato and stuff like that? Um, when you were, were talking with APIs, uh, those are called parameters or options or arguments or whatever. So um, again, don't worry about that too much. Um, I'm going to skip over all the stuff and we can come back to it. So let's get down to the, the nitty gritty and start building stuff. So um, and let me think for a sec how I'm going to get this to fit on my screen. Um, uh, I am going to use the PDF, I think. And there's the PDF. And then I need a web browser too. So I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to kind of change the, sh the shape of these. Uh, let's see if I can turn off the thumbnails, sidebar, whatever. Right sidebar. Awesome. Oops. OK. So this is something I do for myself um, for a lot of things. Um, I, I do something like try to build an API 
and I take notes. I guess everybody does this. You know how to do this. You open up a notepad or, or Microsoft Word or Google Docs, or for me, it's uh, actually a program called Typora. And you start like writing notes on how to do it again. So I've done this a couple of times and kind of compressed the instructions to make it quick. Um, uh, so let me just kind of go through and follow these. So start a new conversation with ChatGPT. Um, I'm going to do this quick instead of easy, kind of. Um, the a step I would do if I were to make this a little bit easier is to use another little notepad thing, a scratch pad to keep track of stuff. But I, I wrote these instructions to minimize the number of copy and paste. Um, so, <clears throat> so I'm not, I'm, I'm copying this and I'm uh, pasting it right into chat GPT. Um, it might be easier if I pasted it onto another pad and then pasted that onto, uh, pasted a couple things onto my scratch pad and then pasted it into um, here. But um, it, I think it's going to have less screens if I do it this way. So, um, so uh, now open a new browser tab with ChatGPT and then click create. Um, I'm going to close almost all these other ones real quick. Let me close that, 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 and that, and this. Uh, so now I've got the conversation with ChatGPT and create a new GPT. Uh, and for that, I go to explore, create a GPT. Um, Okay, this tells me to go straight to the configure tab. Uh, so I'm going to skip the easy builder. I'm going to skip the wizard and go straight to configure. Um, and then it says to scroll down and uncheck these. It's not absolutely necessary. This, this, these just don't matter too much. Um, so this is back where I showed you before. Um, uncheck and then configure actions, create new action. Okay, so now we're back at this uh, um, uh, inscrutable screen, but we've got some instructions this time. Um, click examples and choose weather JSON. If anybody happens to be typing on the notes uh, up in the glossary, you could you could um, add JSON and YAML, or I'll do that later. Um, I'm going to click on, on weather JSON here, and you'll see it. it's added a bunch of stuff to schema. We talked about an API schema real quickly before. It's kind of like a menu. The schema is like a menu. Um, just for the heck of it, let's look at pet store YAML. Um, it turns out that JSON and YAML are two data formats. Um, they're both text, but they spell things, or they, they punctuate things a little bit differently. Um, I've set this up to be JSON, so let's use weather JSON. Okay, so we're right here. Copy the schema example to your clipboard. That means I can click here, do Command A, Command C. Back in the Chow GPT conversation tab, uh, type Shift Enter to create a new blank line. I already did that, and then paste it into the into the chat. Okay, so now my whole thing here is. Uh, and this, this is special wording. I don't expect you to kind of know what this means, but you know, this is, I guess this is some secret sauce. Uh, it's actually not secret. Uh, this is pretty standard programming stuff. If you just copy it, it'll do the right thing. Um, the other thing to know here, I, I'm doing an interesting experiment. Uh, I'm letting ChatGPT, I, what I said is just use this example and create something similar, but have more calls. Uh, this is uh, kind of like meals on the menu. Put more min put more meals on the menu and make it different from weather. I don't want a weather thing. I want something else. Um, if I were doing this, like um, uh, like Patty had uh, lighthouses. You know, she's got a list of seven hundred lighthouses in the U.S. and she wants to be able to chat with it. Um, if I if I if it, this wasn't a demo, I might say, um, I need to, you know, I've got a list of lighthouses or uh, tide tables or something like that. And I need you to help me with that. But 
I'm just letting ChatGPT creative. I, I don't care. Let's just create something, a similar idea, different type of information. So now I'll click send on this. ChatGPT is going to do its thinking thing. Um, all the times I've tried this, uh, you know, in my previous tests, it picks a book information service, which is fine. Um, it actually comes out with different kinds of information that it presents in different different times. But um, okay, so what it's doing here is typing that schema in what's called the Open a API um, format, um, and it's using JSON uh, data. JSON data format. You can use JSON or YAML. Um, a, a thing to notice here, this looks strikingly similar to OpenAI, but it's something different. It's OpenAPI. So this part means that we're talking about APIs, and OpenAPI is a standard way of, of making menus, actually, as it turns out. Um, so this is a menu for an API. Um, and it's a little bit hard to read. I'm not going to try to read it too much right now um, because in the next step, we'll, we'll be able to see it better. So copy the schema example to your clipboard. OK. So I know that I can do that by scrolling up and clicking here, copy code. Back in the, uh, this should be, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, ChatGPT conversation tab. This is where we're chatting. Um, I already made this one. I think I've got a bug in my instructions. I apologize. Um, no, actually, you know, I don't. Um, it, it's it's. Uh, I should use this tab, but I've got um, I've got my copy paste instructions in a little bit the wrong order. Um, uh, let me do this one here. And then, then I should copy this. So I did a copy paste there and then copy this to here. So I'm feeding it back the same information it gave me. Uh, now create a Flask app that implements the REST API responding with example data. Um, I'm, I'm also carrying along a privacy policy uh, that'll become a little bit more useful later. Uh, so Flask happens to be a Python framework, it's called, um, a web framework. It's a very simple framework, which makes it really nice for this and for other things. Um, the framework is a little bit of structure, almost like a, a house foundation or framed house or something like that, the framing in a house. It's a little bit of structure that lets me fill in um, parts of a web application, a whole program. Um, so sorry, that's another kind of like, you just have to know this thing. Um, um, and in another, maybe in another course, we would learn about Python and, and web frameworks and stuff like that. But for now, create a web, a Flask app. Um, so then I'm gonna click send. And it's going to think again. So you'll see that it's calling these endpoints. Um, endpoint, remember, is kind of like a meal on a menu. Um, so it's writing Python code right now. And it's writing Python code that uses Flask, the framework. You don't have to worry too much about this. Uh, right now, it's filling out the privacy policy, which is the biggest part of it. Well, I guess actually it's setting up some data. So it's got two example books for data here, and then it's writing the, the privacy policy. Here's the actual code. Um, this isn't going to be very long. Um, uh, in maybe the 201 version of this, we could get into what's actually happening here, but it's basically code that uses the sample data. And then it, it I guess that's about as, about what it does. Um, OK, so ChatGPT should have generated code for your Flask app. Copy that to your, your 
clipboard. Okay, let's copy this code. So now, uh, now I'm going to go off-roading a little bit. Um, uh, I'm assuming that you've already taken the course on command line interfaces and a little bit of programming. Um, it's not as hard as it looks, maybe. <laughs> um, but this is a command line interface, it's called. Uh, all, all computers have a way to do this. Um, it's an older way of interacting with a computer where you type things and it does stuff. It's not smart. It doesn't understand English. It is, understands little commands like these. This stands for move or copy, um, rename. Um, so I'm just going to do this. Uh, if you just kind of follow along with this, um, you could do this too on your computer. Um, be careful when you're using your command line. You can get into places where um, you, you'll have problems. But um, I'm in the standard place where I keep programs. I'm going to make a folder or a directory called um, Book Pulse um, because we've got a book thing. I'm going to change into that directory. And then I'm going to do a command that's Mac only, um, pv paste into. Uh, app.py. So now we have a file called app.py, which is just the text from that thing. Oops. Um, I, I, uh, I messed myself up there. Let me redo it again. Uh, OK, so here's the text that we just copied from. Um, ChatGPT. And, and it's very short. Uh, I can use a command to count, count the number of lines in it. Um, that whole thing is 64 lines, very short. Uh, so let's go back to the instructions and see what, what we've got. Create a new folder, did that. Use a new folder, paste, yep, yep, yep. Create and activate uh, virtual environment. This is uh, Python mumbo jumbo. Um, it's just something that you just do. And uh, I, I would love to explain this to you some other time, some other venue. Um, I'm having a heck of a time copying that from a PDF. It was easier on my other, other app. So I'm going to do, I didn't copy. I'm going to do that line. And I'm going to do this line. Um, and then I'm going to do this line. All of these are just mumbo jumbo steps. Um, and then ChatGPT should have told you to make sure you have Flask installed. Let's check. There it is there. Thanks, ChatGPT. You got my back. So I'll do that. Um, and now we're kind of like set up. The program is activated. The Mumbo Jumbo steps have activated it. Um, and now I can run it. Um, uh, it's funny, ChatGPT said, you can run this script. It doesn't tell me how. So. Um, Actually, let me ask. Uh, so you can, when you're working with ChatGPT like this, um, uh, so now it's going to be kind of over verbose um, because I've already done some of this. Um, I'm going to let it keep doing that and follow the instructions instead. Um, but they're going to be pretty much the same. So, uh, oh, <laughs> ask it how to run it, unless it's already told you. Sometimes it tells you. Um, follow its instructions. Uh, okay, instructions. I guess we'll do it your way. There's a couple different ways you can run it, and some of them are better or worse. Um, so I guess uh, what I was trying to model here was go ahead and ask ChatGPT how to do stuff if it doesn't, if it doesn't. So we'll do that. Um, so it's got Windows instructions and, and Mac and Linux instructions on this. You'll see that they're very similar, but a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to do that, paste this over here. 
Um, and then do this, copy code. Okay. Um, programmers like to make scary looking messages. It's just, just the way we work. Uh, so this is a scary looking message. You can actually ignore the scariness of it, kind of. Um, we're doing a demo, we're not doing production. Um, if we were doing production, then we would really want to be scared about this. We would use a little bit fancier setup, but this is fine for now. So let's see where we are in the instructions. Uh, Flash should say, yep, we're good. Um, we need to rec remember that 5,000, it's pretty standard. So, so now I'm going to make a new window um, and type this command into it. Uh, or paste it. Um, so uh, I was hoping, I, I didn't do enough homework. I, I was wishing I had a diagram to, to show all this stuff, but let me describe it and maybe we'll do a diagram some other time. Um, I've got uh, Flask makes a web server um, and it's a web server that doesn't do pages, it does information. So our application is a book thing. It, it knows information about books. The information was you know, put into it by ChatGPT. So this web server is running on my computer right now. It's not running in the cloud. It's not, uh, so, and my computer, you can't get to it because my router is gonna prevent people from getting to it. So there's a cool thing called local tunnel. Um, it's abbreviated here as LT. Local tunnel says, hey, if you make a, you, can you make a, a web out of this for me that everybody can get to? And then can you make it get to my computer? Um, it's kind of funny. You can see these are the, the logs it's called. This is what happens. The, the program is printing every time it gets a web request. Um, just by me uh, like highlighting that, um, Mac OS said, oh, wow, it looks like he's got a URL there. I wonder if it's interesting and what, you know, how I'm going to help him use it. So immediately it went and grabbed um, something called the favicon and the touch icons. It tried to, um, my, my Mac tried to get the, um, uh, the pictures, the little pictures that go along with this website so that when I paste it somewhere, you know, it, would, it, it, it wants it handy. Um, it turns out that I don't have that set up in this little web server, which is fine. Um, 404, you might have seen this before. 403 means I didn't find it. So um, my computer, through local tender at this web address, told my computer again, hey, dude, uh, I don't have any pictures for you. Go away, basically. Or you know, I'm going, going to ignore you. So uh, let's get back to the instructions. Um, we can see that it's kind of going. Um, I hope it wasn't too confusing. I think it's probably really confusing if you draw a picture on your, maybe we'll do that a little bit later. Um, uh, let's see. So go back to my first ChatGPT conversation tab, copy the code for the OpenAI schema. Um, if you remember that, before we had it write the code, we had it create this schema. So I'm gonna copy that again. And an API schema is like a menu. Um, okay, so we've uh, copied that. Now go to the GPT tab where you have the example weather JSON schema. Um, select all of that, Command A, backspace. So now I don't have anything there again. But I do have in my clipboard, I have the thing that uh, ChatGPT created for me about books. The, the menu for a book restaurant, kind of, um, a book API. Um, cool. So now, as soon as I pasted that, look what it did. It knows how to, I don't know, I mean, I could kind of figure out how to read this schema, but it's for computers. Schemas are for computers. But um, since it's in standard OpenAI format, it knows how to read the, the menu and it, it turned this into names and addresses. So now these are the essentially the meals. This is you know the hamburgers and tacos or whatever. Um, but um, as specified by this schema that ChatGPT created for us. So ChatGPT made these different different endpoints, it's called, they're called. 
um, including a privacy one, which is something I asked it for. I didn't ask it anything about these. I said, make something like weather, but different, and it made books. So I can get information about one book. I can get um, all the books by an author, all the books by a title. Um, I can get recommendations, and that's cool. And I can get the privacy policy, which is not books. So let's see how the instructions are doing. Um, so paste your new schema. The schema immediately parsed. Your API actions will show up. Great. Uh, go to the window with local tun tunnel and copy the URL. So let's find that window again. Copy this URL again, which I wonder, yep. Mac OS tried to grab the pictures again. Um, it's not going to remember that it doesn't have the pictures. It's going to ask every time, which is fine. Um, so go to the window with local tunnel, copy the URL, did that, paste the URL into the section with servers and URL over the um, example URL. I, I didn't say it here. I should have added into the schema section or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead to the scary looking code stuff. Um, I don't really have to understand what this punctuation means. Um, all I have to do is paste over this example URL. So this is the API URL. This is kind of like the restaurant address. Um, this looks like a funny web address. Uh, you can see this is local tunnel. You know, whoever made local tunnel um, made it so that this is the service that they have, and then they've they've got a thing where they've got a web server that all it does is it listens for stuff from the public and then sends it to me on my port 5000. And to do that, it's using what's called the subdomain there. Instead of www, it has to make up a new one for everybody. So right now it's tender poets type, great. So this is you know uh, just the address of my API, uh, my, the public address of my API. So um, scroll down to the privacy policy, section of this. Um, so this is, uh, these are my things under available actions. And then under authentication, I don't need a key for this. I, I'm not going to set up a key for this. Um, uh, privacy policy is required for all public GPTs. So I don't have to start off with one of these, but if I want anybody else to be able to hit it, like you all, um, I'm going to need to put a privacy policy though. So that's why I asked um, ChatGPT to put a privacy uh, endpoint in it. And then it says add slash privacy at the end. So I just did that. We're done defining the action. Wow. OK. So click the back arrow to get back to GPT configuration. Gotcha. Um, there's a confusing thing here. I put it in the parenthetical there. There's two things that are really similar to each other. This one exits your new GPT creation. Do not do that. I did it once or twice. Um, we, what we do want to do is go back to where we have create and configure. So click that one. Uh, OK, so now click the Create tab. So you'll see there's nothing in the configuration here except an action. Um, and the action is pretty meaty. You, know, you can ask it about books and stuff. Um, so I'm going to click Create. Um, and then uh, I'm going to copy this from the instructions, put it here, and then I've got to get that local tunnel URL again here. Um, so let me get that window. Oops. This is another homework thing. I wanted to make this less less uh, copy paste, but I didn't do that yet in the instructions. So, so you'll notice something interesting here. I'm, I'm actually letting it, I, I'm, you know, I, I could tell it, you know, hey, I, I want to build a GPT where somebody can look up books um, and, you know, they should have these kinds of things. I kind of already let it do that work. Um, that API schema just defines what this API can do. So maybe if I were building this on purpose, maybe if I were building the Lighthouse lookup thing, I would say I wanted to be able to look at lighthouses by state and by zip code and all that kind of stuff. Here, I'm going to let it figure it out because ChatGPT is pretty good at figuring stuff out. So um, 
I'm going to say, I just want this to uh, help people use the API. I don't even, I'm not even going to tell you what the API is, but it knows about that because we've set it up as the action. So now it's thinking a little bit what it's doing right here. This whole, everything that this create tab does is talk to you and then type stuff into the configure tab. Um, it scares me to click the configure tab before it's done. So I'm not going to do it, even though I think I probably could. Maybe someday when I'm not doing a demo, I'll, I'll test that. Um, so um, again, I think I could click over here, but let's follow the wizard and follow the wizard along. Book Buddy is great, um, except it's I've already used it. So uh, I'll say, how about another? Uh, sure, I like oh, that's a good name, literary assistant. So now it's thinking some more. It's setting up the name for it. Uh, now it's uh, calling Dolly uh, to make a picture. These create steps are fairly standard. This is what you do when usually what you do is you do this first. Um, I'm kind of doing it backwards because I wanted to get the API built and then go back and design the GPT. You can certainly do it the other way around. Most people would. They design the GPT first and then figure out how to build the API. But this is a, a nice quick way to shorten it and let Chief Chat GPT do a bunch of the work. Um, uh, I like it. That's a great, uh, great image. So now I think it's going to say, you know, tell me more about what you want the users, your users to, you know, be able to do with this. Oops. I got to hit a special key when I hit enter, which is why sometimes I, I don't quite hit it. Um, okay, so because it's so helpful, it's going to keep helping me and helping me and helping me. Um, it's like you can just ignore it uh, since it's just a bot. I, I got what I wanted out of it. I wanted to configure this a little bit with the name and the description. Um, uh, and then this is the key part. Usually, well, you when you make a GPT, you go back and forth. Um, you can use the Create tab to, to start this. But when you want to get really fancy and do different things, you customize this. At some point, people find themselves not using create as much and can use and configure a lot more. You kind of get the point of the whole create thing. And then you can just go ahead and, and write instructions in here. Um, so um, let's read a little bit what it wrote. Um, you know, uh, help, help people use the API uh, instructions, great. Um, this is kind of an explanation of what it can do and it's also knows that I've got a privacy policy. It, it made this up. Um, I didn't tell it anything about avoiding technical jargon, but you know, if I'm, if I'm saying helping somebody, that's, that's great. So this looks fine as a way to start. Um, the, let me make this bigger now that we've got. This, this thing is usually two panes like this. Um, these are like starter questions. Um, uh, that go right here for users. So these look great. Uh, I don't have any knowledge, um, but I do have that action. Um, and if I ever want to see those or change it, I can click that um, gear thing and then make sure I click this back. Okay. Um, you might also want to look at additional settings. Do you want um, the conversation data that you're your bot creates. Do you want it to go back to Open a API to a, sorry a, Open AI? I did it. Um, do you want it to improve their models or not? I'm going to click no. Sometimes I click yes. Sometimes I click no. Um, if you if you care about your users' privacy, you might click no. Okay, so how are we doing? Um, are people awake, asleep? Um, I'm going to let's look at each other for a little bit. We're ready to test. Is this super exciting or super scary or super boring? Questions? Claire's got it going on. I think for me, it'll take a couple of times going through the PDF. Like I have like regular GPTs down, but the- Yeah, there's a lot going on, a lot of moving parts here. 
Um, okay, so ready to test? Everybody is excited as I am? Um, scared? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so to recap, we, we I did a lot of explanation here, um, but a lot of it was just a little bit of copying and pasting of the those key phrases um, to get ChatGPT going and then to get the Python code in the right place and then to get it running. So what we've got here, um, and I wonder, um, uh, I'm, I'm actually gonna try to draw a little diagram uh, with my favorite scalpel. So um, we've got Pete's computer, uh, the local tunnel cloud endpoint, I'll call it. Um, and then we've got Pete's computer, the GPT, and we have Pete's computer, uh, the API book look up okay so what's going to happen here um, and then this is uh, back on shape um, uh, this is this is inside my house behind my router. This is the, the public web. Um, this GPT, when I click something here, ChatGPT is gonna think about it. Um, uh, I'm gonna type a question. It's gonna go to the ChatGPT server. ChatGPT server is gonna think about it a little bit. It's gonna say, hey, I need some information from the, the book API. It's going to connect um, connect to here, which is going to connect to here, if that makes sense. So um, if I were to make this in production, what I would do is move this out someplace else. And I may, might not use this. I might use something else, actually. Um, so everybody could get this. And most critically, right now, if I turn off that thing, nobody's going to be able to get to it. But for a demo, it's good enough. So let's click uh, something. How can I find a book by its title? Wow, book information service. Um, OK, uh, because it's a demo, I'm going to like cut it short. I'm going to just look up a book. Um, uh, let's cheat a little bit. Um, I, I saw that it didn't make much sample uh, example books. Uh, so let's go look at our books real quick. Um, uh, I'm actually going to do control C to stop the server. So right now it's not running. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to do this kind of a weird way, but I'm going to copy this to a text file and then open the text file. So um, so other other times I've tried this, it's come up with better things like it does Harry Potter and um, uh, and 1984 George Orwell. So these are pretty boring uh, book names. But if you think about it, if I ask our book uh, manager about a book called uh, Harry Potter, for instance, it's not gonna find it and then everybody's gonna be sad. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit, I'm gonna help it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for a book called Example Book One, <laughs> even though that's a really dorky name. Um, so I need to start up our server again. Uh, and then uh, tell me about Example Book One. So you have to pretend in your mind that that's uh, Harry Potter or something like that. OK, so this is something the user won't see. Um, but since I'm in preview mode, I'm still 
I'm still developing my um, my book thing. Um, it says, you know, here's some information, debug information about what I'm doing and uh, what I got back. And uh, I think this will happen for everybody. Um, this is a part where this is a potential privacy problem because um, uh, ChatGPT is about to send information to a third party service, which it doesn't know if it should trust or not. So it says, do you want me to do this right, right one time? Do you want me to always just do this? Or do you want me to, you know? So if this was, you know, if I knew, if I had told this something private, like PII, like somebody's name and phone number and address, when it asked me, I would say, oh, decline. I don't want to send that information. But if it's information about example book one or Harry, you know, the title Harry Potter, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, okay, so um, uh, I hate you a little bit, ChatGPT, for coming up with such boring uh, sample data because other times it's done great sample data. But anyway, this is the title of a book. Um, it looked it up in its little database of two books, um, and it knows that it's uh, authored by um, author A. Uh, here's a summary of the book, and the example data is this is a summary of the book. Um, let's compare that with what we got on, um, this is the, the actual program it wrote, right? So you can see it got, it didn't get author B, it got author A, it didn't say example book two, it said example book one. So this is an, an illustration of it looking up, um, you know, a book in our little database of two books. Uh, this looks like an ISBN for me. Uh, I'm going to guess that it does ISBNs. I didn't really see that. I guess if I look in configure and we could look at this action, I guess. What is, what's on our menu? It um, doesn't have ISBN. Let me, let me see what happens. Um, Uh, I'm hitting a different endpoint, so it it was careful and said, even though I'm talking to the same server, I'm going to the same restaurant. You know, last time you asked for a hamburger, this time you asked for a taco. I'm going to make sure that he's okay with asking for taco. So that's why it asked me again. Do you really want to talk to him? Um, okay, so uh, you might see uh, I can do a lookup by ISBN, even though it's not. Really, I don't even know how that works. <laughs> um, uh, let's... Uh, query the best. Get did he freeze? Yeah, you're on mute, Vicky. Yeah, you froze for me too. Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to get to my mute button. Yeah, I think I thought it was my my connection gets janky sometimes, but I think he froze. Yeah, he's coming back. Oh, <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of questions. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, I'm back. Uh, I'm at the peak demo or something. You got like lost that. in your Everything local crashed. tunnel, didn't you? Uh, probably got lost <laughs> lost the local tunnel. Um, let's let's talk questions and stuff. Let me do real quick. I can put the um, uh, let's let's publish the GPT real quick. Um, uh, so that that people can play with it while they're um, so. 
that would be here, here. Uh, so I can I, I can save my new GPT. I can save it just for me. I can save it invite only, well, link only, um, unlisted, or I can save it to public. Um, uh, I don't want it in the GPT store, even though I don't have GPC store yet. I'm going to do only people with link. That's fine. Um, if I do either one of these, I need a privacy, well, at least public. I need a privacy policy at some point. And so that's why I, I had it do the privacy policy stuff. Might as well just build it in from the beginning. Um, so um, copy link. Let me put this in chat and feel free to play with it. Um, it's not going to be very smart. It only knows the two books. Um, and next thing that we could do uh, would be to add some more books and, and try something like that. OK, what should we talk about? Questions, concerns? I have a question. I got a little confused on the command line interface. So mm -hmm. that is where I got a little lost, <laughs> not to like delve into that subject. I'm sure it's a very long topic. Um, but are there any applications I can use like Zapier or Make where I don't necessarily have to go through that command line interface? Uh, Zapier or Make? Yes. I, I haven't heard of, well, I think I have heard of that. Um, the, the short answer is kind of. <laughs> um, uh, is it okay if I share my screen? I, I'm not interrupting people's, we're not doing faces too much anyway. Um, uh, let me share and then, and point to the picture at least. Um, it's a really good question. Uh, Kayla, right? Um, so, Uh, so in a way, this is kind of two demos in one. I'm doing GPT development and I'm doing API development. Um, so uh, to answer your question, if you're doing API development, the, the short answer is no, you can't use Zapier or Make. Um, uh, wow. Thanks, Kat Katrin. Um, uh, if um, uh, thanks, Kayla. Uh, if I weren't making my own API, uh, it's really common to use uh, uh, Zapier. I know I don't know about Make, but it's really common to say. Um, uh, I don't. I don't think I'll demo it here because I'll probably fumble around more. But um, the uh, most, well, I don't know, a lot of, the, a, a fair number of a AI salon people are interested in how can I, uh, how can I build an API, I, I guess. <laughs> Maybe not that many people, but um, it's really cool. It's super, super cool um, and pretty easy to do. Um, so uh, let's draw another picture maybe as a, as a better way to, to do this. Uh, so um, I'm going to copy all these things over and um, delete this and delete this. Um, and Kayla, what would you connect Zapier to, if I may ask, as an example? Well, just like if you're trying to improve, improve workflows for an organization and you're maybe yep. creating a, a GPT for them. So... It could connect to their email. It could connect to Slack or any other systems they use. Um, so it it works kind of the same way. Um, so somebody at Slack, uh, Salesforce, or somebody at Microsoft wrote an API, kind of like I did, except it took a lot longer and they used heavier weight tools. Um, they wrote an API that um, uh, uh, connects to the Slack backend, right? And same thing here. 
so the, the short answer is knowing a little bit about APIs helps you know kind of what's going on. Um, and I don't know, so hopefully today's demo was at least kind of interesting. Um, uh, on the front end, you do the same thing. Um, uh, it's funny, I kind of got these wrong. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I kind of answered your question uh, and I should ask you if you have another question, a follow on. No, you did. I just, I mean, I understand the basics of this, but I just get a little nervous when I think about writing all of the code that you had in the command line interface um, when you had that screen open. So the good news is you don't have to. Okay. <laughs> That's where it made me nervous. So I was like, is there like an easier way to go about that? There's, you know, there's a, there's a few things you end up so Zapier has has done all of that for you, but only for the things that they connect to, right? Only whatever 300 or 800 things that connect to. If it's a thing that that they don't connect to, then you're SOL. Um, uh, it helps a little bit to know, to at least know that there's uh, API schema and things like that. Um, so uh, probably not for Slack or Outlook, but for other things, Sometimes what you find is um, maybe Slack was kind of uh, there's you know there's there's things that you can do that native on the Slack app that you can't do through an API or or it, it's very common you know I go to Zapier and I want to do a particular thing I want to you know I don't know uh, look up all the members you know on Slack or something like that and it's like I guess that's a bad example, but there are certainly things I've I've tried. You know, thanks for connecting to the service, but all the interesting things I can't do. So that's when somebody, probably not you, has to write an API that does more. So um, so mail is kind of one of those things where, you know, if it's Outlook, Outlook probably has a pretty good API, and Zapier probably has a pretty good connection to Outlook. But if it's a, a weird mail server, you know, they may or may not have a good API, and Zapier may or may not have written the, the integration for it. Um, uh, let's uh, let's take a quick vote or something. Uh, we can do more of the API, playing around with API stuff. We could add more sample data or something like that and see the, the logs or stuff. Um, or we could switch over a little bit and go down Kayla's track and um, I, could, I could poke around at Zapier and see how you would do that kind of stuff. Um, I have a quick question, yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for putting all this together. I mean, this is this is really great. Um, secondly, I'm completely lost. <laughs> yeah. I've got like little or no programming experience. Mm -hmm. So just kind of joined in as, as you know, that's the way you learn, right? Um, so, I, and I'm gonna ask some very basic questions. So please, yeah, please. humor me as I go through this. Um, API. So I've mm -hmm. I've done several GPTs, mm -hmm. and API is essentially like a little mini program where you're telling the GPT to do a certain thing and go a certain place and do a certain thing. It's like a little mini program within a GPT. Is that a correct understanding? I I would say that the GPT is it's it's pretty close. Um, the the GPT is a program, and then there's probably a pretty big program somewhere running that knows how to answer the API. So you're, you're maybe a different way to say it. It's like you're calling an app. The, the GPT is able, able to call an app. It can call Zapier or it can call maybe like a, a weather API or something like that or a book API. Okay, so you're telling it to go to a particular program and have yeah. it do something. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's good. Um, you lost me at uh, like the command line that Kayla was bringing up. I've never heard of book port pull, and you went to an area on your computer called one term two, and or yep. I term two, and I also I have a, I've never been to that area. It's a little scary, and I'm like, oh geez, if I 
you know, put in the wrong code. Yep. Uh, I screw up my the re the other functioning of my computer. So I I I'm guess I'm I'm wondering if it's neophyte proof if that area if that's possible to do that if you just uh add on additional code could and you don't and you do it wrong could you really create quite a mess for yourself it's it's a great question um let me not lose the question before that either i think you had another one before i term and all that wasn't there another one uh it was right um it was below the flask app thing which came when you were doing the schema and I, I was following along right up until then and then i'm looking at your pdf chat gpt should have generated code for the flask app check if they got it <laughs> on your computer create a new folder yes there. and then i'm like where is that and then, oh, then right 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 that's the question that i was thinking of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And book pulse. yep totally. um uh, th thank you all, by the way, for being brave and kind of just like going going with it. Um, yeah. I know it's really intimidating. And I went through, this is like kind of as deep as it gets. You know, you, you saw like programmer guts here pretty much. Um, oh. So I I normally think that's a bad thing for tech people to do. I, I, I don't think, you know, two years ago, you know, Pete from 2020-21 would have said, hey, don't be showing people terminal and you know command line interfaces and API keys and all that kind of stuff. The reason, the reason I think it's relevant um, is because two things. Chat, chat GPT makes it so that you can you have superpowers kind of with whatever you want to do, right? You have to be a little bit careful about guardrails. So you're right to ask of, you know, is it neophyte proof? But you know, hey, I need a contract for blah blah blah, you know, and it'll sketch out a contract. The the cool thing is, or or a program, right? The cool thing is, you can do that yourself without really knowing anything, right? Like I know programming languages now, or I can write in programming languages now that I I've never learned because I have my friend ChatGPT to help me. Same thing with everybody in their job, right? So you you have to be really careful about um, uh, about knowing when you're going to get into trouble. And so your question is spot on. Um, we, we have this weird transition phase where ChatGPT enables people to do things they wouldn't otherwise be able to do by just giving them instructions to walk through it. The early adopters are the ones that should take advantage of that and do it. And so programming is programming and playing around in the guts of your computer is a thing that I think more people should do more often because you get fast, it's it's pretty quick to, to do it and you get lots of results. Um, the longer term thing is in two years, a lot of this stuff is gonna be automated um, by people like me or like by people like you actually, seriously. Um, and it will be a lot easier and less complex and stuff like that. So if you're an early adopter, I think it's the time to get into it and do it and show other people how brilliant you are by doing this amazing and impossible thing. Yada yada. So Kayla, even things like, you know, I need to connect to my Slack, you know, that's it's a little bit complicated. And then there's a lot of moving parts there. But you know, sometimes I don't know. I, you know. Uh, so to answer your questions, uh, let me share a screen, uh, Darlene. Um, uh, I went super fast with all the command line stuff. Um, and maybe you've you've probably seen so the the usual way people would get to the command line is to go to their applications and then scroll down to utilities. Uh, Apple kind of hit it. And then you click on a thing called terminal. terminal. Oops. Um, sorry, I'm moving windows around and my window disappeared. Um, let me do that again. Uh, applications, utilities, terminal. So they purposely kind of hit it because they don't want you mucking around with it. It's not quite neophyte proof. Um, uh, so here's terminal. And I can make the, the font a little bit bigger. So if you look at it, um, terminal and iterm look pretty much the same. I think you need to share your screen maybe. 
So the good news is you didn't see me fumbling a couple of windows. The bad news is you didn't see me fumbling a couple of windows. Um, uh, okay. So, sorry. Uh, uh, let's see. And wow, I lost my applications thing. Um, I, I keep, oh, here it is here. Uh, so here's applications. You go to applications, which is usually someplace else for most people. It's not even like you go into it some other weird way, but I put it on the, the, men, the menu bar, taskbar. Um, so applications, utilities, it's got all kinds of weird stuff in here, including terminal. So that's how you start terminal. Okay. Um, terminal and iTerm are very similar. Uh, iTerm is just nicer. Okay. So if you use Terminal, you should kind of switch to iTerm. iTerm is open source free, just works kind of better. Terminal is actually fine. It's, there's no problem with it. So then um, Neophyte proof. The, the short answer is no, it's not Neophyte proof. The little bit longer answer is um, you, need to use a, you need to learn a few commands um, and you, you put them on a cheat sheet. Um, and they're things like change directory, uh, change directory um, to, I'm going to type tilde here, which means my home directory, change directory to my source, Peter Kaminsky. Um, tab makes it autocomplete, so you can save a lot of typing that way. Um, uh, there's a command called ls. Uh, which stands for list. Um, so I'm going to type another quick command, which is open dot, and that means open it in Finder. So what I did, um, another thing I love to do on a Mac, by the way, is find your home directory and then drag it over here. <laughs> um, another thing that I know about Mac is you can't depend on this stuff being there forever. So you have to, to, to do another thing to make it so it's permanent. But Anyway, um, what I did, uh, I was at my home directory and then I went to SRC. Um, and then I went to Peter Kaminsky. And then I just, what I did was uh, make it, I made a directory called Book Pulse. Um, so, Book Pulse uh, demo folder creation. Is there like like an API for dummies or something like that? Has that been written yet? Because we're so new in this technology. And I'm also wondering if your API could maybe look up a book <laughs> in that area that can go through like, you know, this all all the basics for I that's a another really good question. Let me do some homework. Um, I think the we're we're doing something new, which is like I I dragged you way over into programmer land, right? Like I think I I skipped probably like a year and a half of of uh, of class to get to here. Like you wouldn't learn about APIs to start. So um, I'm still sharing my screen, right? Yep. So uh, O'Reilly is kind of like a really great place to go for for books. Um, and there you go. This is this would cover what I just went through, but it would cover it for. Um, let me copy and paste this chat. Um, it would go over it for developers, um, and you know, to be fair, actually, I. Um, I, I didn't, I, I said a lot, I took a lot of shortcuts that developers, you know, I, when I said, you know, make a directory or whatever, um, I just kind of skipped over a bunch of stuff. Um, I would imagine if I went to YouTube, um, introduction to APIs. Yeah, there you go. Okay, perfect. Um, Yeah. Uh, there's there's a there's a danger here that you you'll you'll end up 
because the, the topic is really big, you can end up in blind alleys really quickly. So there's a bunch of stuff that you don't need to know. Um, and there's a few things that you do need to know. So I think if I were doing this, um, probably what I would do is I would rely a lot on like maybe do a, a quick beginners thing, even even just a you know you know a medium post on you know here's the top level things to know about APIs, and then I would do a lot of asking ChatGPT for more information.